This is part one of our series on arrays, and we're going to be looking at an introduction into arrays. Now let's take an example. Let's take an example where you are a golfer, and you want to record your scores for a golf course. If you've never played golf before, uh, maybe you've played putt-putt. I don't really play putt-putt very well. I keep hitting the ball up in the air, so I more like play chip-chip more than putt-putt. But if you played putt-putt, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of holes that you play, and you need to record the score you got for each hole. Now, um, some putt-putt uh, venues have like nine holes, but a golf course normally has 18 holes. So let's pretend you're a golfer and you want to record the score for the hole one that you got, the score you got in hole one for that round. So you need an integer for that. Now, obviously, you need to record the score for hole two. So you need another integer for that. And then you need another one for hole three. And then, um, yeah, you're going to need 18 variables for each hole that you're going to record a score for. Um, that's quite a lot of variables. That's, that's, a, that's a massive amount. Now, that's only in the event that you've got one golfer. Imagine you've got two golfers. Well, then if you've got two golfers, then you need to say, okay, this is hole one for player one, hole two for player two one hole three for player one so that's just the 18 variables for player one and then you need another 18 variables for player two so that's 36 variables um and the more golfers you've got the more problem you're going to have so many variables so like this is quite a problem having so many different variables and trying to keep track of them and try to use them all now imagine instead of having just one variable like one integer imagine if we could have like a whole table of variables like a like a variable that had a whole bunch of integers in it and, and we do have that in delphi and in most programming languages and that's called an array so we're going to look at how do we use arrays so let's first talk about how do we uh, declare an array okay so the first thing we do is we're going to declare the array with a name just like you would name any other variable and we use the pirate prefix the reason why i call it the pirate prefix is because it's r so during these videos you're going to hear my pirate slang come out because you can say r golf a lot so there's the pirate prefix so we're going to say what is the name of the array just like you would name any other variable so there's array golf then you need to say what type of variable is this well it's an array well that makes sense but we need to specify how many blocks are in that array, how many little blocks are there. And we do that by using square brackets, and we put in two numbers separated by two dots. Now, those two numbers represent the lower index and the upper index. So the first value is the position of the first value, and the last number is the position of the last value. So that would be an array of 18 blocks. So if I had an array from 1 to dot, dot 10, that would be an array of 10 blocks. That tells me how many blocks are in my array. And then after that, when you say, what, well, what, what type of array is it? It's an array of integer. What type of values are each of those blocks? And that's the data type of this. So each type of those 18 blocks will be an integer. Each individual block can store one integer value. So that's how you declare an array. And once you declare an array, it would look something like that. Obviously, I don't have space to fit in all 18 blocks, but you get the idea. The first position is at position 1. And the last position is at position 18. Okay, so there we go. Now those, those positions at the top, that 1, 2, 3, 4, the position of the blocks, we, we call those the indices or the index. So position 1, that's the position 1's indice or index. So, and it goes up until position 18. Now the value that we put into those blocks at position 1 or position 18, those, like for example there, we've got a 3 at position 1 and a 4 at position 2. And at position 18, we store in a 4. Those are what we call the elements. So when we refer to the elements of the array, we're talking about the values inside the array. And when we talk about the position or the indices, we're talking about where its position is in the array. Position 1, 2, 3, or 4. So, so that's how we, that's the terminology when we're dealing with arrays. Okay. So let's look at how we can, other ways of declaring arrays. You could have an array from one to four of strings. So that's four blocks and each block would be a string. So there's array names. What happens if we want to store values for the grades of a high school? And we want the first position not to be position one, but position eight. So there is an example of an array of five integers. I know it says eight to 12, but it's still five integers because position, the first indice or first position is position eight then a 9, then a 10, then an 11, then a 12. So there are still only 5 blocks in that array grades array. 
Then we have an array temp, which goes from negative 5 to 5. So the first block is negative 5, and then a negative 4, and then a negative 3. So there are 11 blocks in that one. You might say 11, but it's negative 5 to 5. Well, don't forget the 0. So it's when it, 0 is an extra 1. So there's 11 blocks that all can store real values for the array temp. And you can even use characters for your lower and upper index. So you could say position A to F. So that would be A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's a whole bunch of blocks there. And you refer to each one as a char value. So there's the different types of arrays that you can declare. So let's take an array from 1 to 4 of type string. So we've got four blocks. Each of those blocks are strings. So like, how do we get a value into the array? Well, to get a value into the array, you're going to take the name of the array. So in this case, array names. And then in square brackets, you're going to refer to the particular block that you want to put a value in or the particular position or indices. So at position one, you want to change its value and we use the assign symbol like you normally do. We want to say array names position one must be changed, assign the value of, now this is a string, so we're going to put a string value in, Bruce in quotes. So we're going to take the word Bruce and we're going to put it into position one. And then if we want to put a value in position 2, let's say we want to put Betty in position 2, there we go. And I want to put a Justin in position 4, then it'll just put it in, just into position 4. So there you go. That's how you change values inside an array. You refer to the name of the array, followed by square brackets, and the position of the value that you are changing, or the indice of the value that you are changing. Okay, so let's take another example. Let's say we've got ar array numbers from 1 to 4. Or from 5 to 14 and they all store a whole bunch of integers so there's a there's a whole bunch of integers there first position is position 5 and till position 14. now the beauty of arrays because that it's one technically one big variable of a whole bunch of integers we can actually use a for loop now to change those values so i can use a for loop that goes from from 5 to 14 from the lower limit to the upper limit so from 5 to 14 what am i doing i'm changing Array numbers, square bracket i. So square bracket i. So that equals to zero. So what that's doing is the for loop will become, i will become a five. So it's change array numbers five to a zero. And then the for loop will change the five to a six. Array number six must change to a zero. And then array number seven and so on until it reaches 14. So that's a very quick way to change all of those blocks to zeros. That's almost like initializing the array. So that's a very quick way to do it. In two lines, instead of having 10 lines where you change each one individually, you can just use a for loop. Okay. Let, let's say we change the values from to random 6. Random 6 will be a random number from 0 to 5. And in this case, each value in the array will be different. It will be either a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5. And so that's what happened. I'll take position 5. I will be a 5. Pos array numbers 5, change it to a random number. In this case, it's a 1. Then array number 6, change it to a different value. So that's, obviously, if you did this code, your numbers might be different because it's random. But there you go. Using a for loop, we're able to edit a whole bunch of values in the array with just two lines. So let's take this scenario. We've got array names. Okay, so it's an example where we've got four strings in, a, in an array. And we're going to use a for loop. And we are going to use an input box in this case. So we can say array names r is equal to an input box. Now you can see the input box is going to say, hey, name, enter name into string r. So the first time that input box will pop up, variable r, the for loop variable, is going to be a 1. So it's going to go array names 1 is equal to an input box that says enter name 1. So we will enter a name, and that name will go into position 1. And then another box will pop up because that loop will run four times. And this time it'll say enter name 2, and that value will be stored into array names i, which will be 2 at that time. And then the for loop variable will become a 3 and a 4. And so that way, a block like that will pop up for the first time. Enter name 1. We can say Peter. We press OK. And Peter will then go into position 1. And then it will do that another three more times until your array is filled. So let's take an, a full array. It's, you can see the values Bruce, Betty, Peter, and Justin are inside my string array. Now, we want to take those values and we want to try to display them. We want to go get the values. We know how to change them, but how do we access them? 
exactly like we've done already. We refer to the name of the array, followed by square brackets, by the position of the of in the array of what you, of the value that you want. So, for example, you want to display the first value in a, in a memo control. You say memo one dot lines at add add array names at position one, and then after that you can there we go add position one, and then after that we're going to add array names two, and then add array names three and add array names four. So our memo control will look something like that. All of those values will be displayed in the memo control. But we can do this just as well by using a for loop. So we can loop from 1 to 4. So we loop from the lower index to the upper index. And what are we doing each time? We are going to display in memo1.lines.add, in the memo control, we are displaying array names, square bracket, i. Because i is going to become a 1. So display name 1. Then the loop will become i will be a 2. So display array names at position 2. And then array the, the for loop variable will become a three and display array names at position three and so on and so on. And it will give you that R will give you the same result. So those four lines of code that we wrote, we can do in two lines. Now imagine if you had an array of names of a hundred names. You see how this makes life a lot easier of displaying them in a memory control than doing each one individually. Okay, so let's take another scenario. Let's say we've got array names, uh, or array numbers, sorry, from 1 to 10. And we're going to do the following code. We're going to go from 1 till 10, and we're going to add on 5 onto array numbers. Now, what is happening here? Let's have a look. So let's start. The R variable, the looping variable, starts off as a 1. Okay, so R is going to become a 1 first. Then array numbers R, that'll be array numbers at position 1. So what's the value at array numbers position 1? Well, that's a 10. You can see that's a 10. What are we doing to array numbers? Or what are we doing with that value 10? We are going to plus 5 onto it. So we're going to plus 5. So what's 10 plus 5? That's 15. What do we do with that 15? Well, we're going to take that 15 and we're going to put it into array numbers R, which is array numbers 1. At position 1, we are changing position 1 to 10 plus 5, which is 15. So basically, we are increasing the value at position 1 by 5. And then the loop will go to position 2. R will become a 2. We now look at array numbers R. That is array numbers at position 2. What is the value? That's a 45. What are we doing to that 45? We're plusing 5 to it. So let's add 5. What's 45 plus 5? That's 50. What do we do with that 50? We are storing that 50 in array numbers R, which is array numbers 2. So we are changing at position 2. It was a 45. We're changing it to a 40, from 45 to a 50. So we're increasing it by 5. And if we go to position 3, the same thing. We want to get array numbers R, which is array numbers at position 3. What is the value? 100. We're going to add the 5. 100 plus 5 is 105. And we store that in position 3. So this code is basically taking all the values in the array and increasing each individual value by 5. And it's going to continue for the rest of the array from 4 up until 10 and change all those values, increasing them by 5. Okay, so that's that's how easy. Instead of doing each one individually, we can just use a for loop to go and do the same thing across every value in an array. Okay, so let's have a look here. So we spoke about a golf array um, in our initial example. Now, imagine if we had multiple players like we had in, in, when we discussed in the beginning. What, what you can do is if you, instead of calling the golf array, you can call it array player 1, which is from 1 to 18. And if you have that, you can declare multiple arrays of that type of array. So you can say array player 1, array player 2, and array player 3. Those are all arrays from 1 to 18 of integers. So each one of those arrays for player 1, for player 2, player 3, each one will be a separate set of 18 integer blocks so that's how you can store each one individually another thing you can do is you can set the default values to an array so for example when you declare array that would just declare an array from one to four of top string which has nothing in those those blocks now if you declare it this way where you declare it as normally but at the end you say equals and then you put in brackets the values that you want in the array. Do you see those values there? James, Sarah, Melanie, Brad. We're basically going to say, hey, at position one, put in James. At position two, put in Sarah. So however many blocks you have in your array. So in this case, we've got four blocks. You need to put that many values in brackets 
when you put default values. In this case, our array will look something like that before we even start using it. So when it gets declared, it gets declared with default values in them from the start. And because those are string values, you'll notice that we put double or single quotes around the string values because they're obviously string values that must go into the array. If we had, for example, an integer array, there's array numbers from 1 to 10, we can set default values, but in, because it's an integer, we just can put the numbers normally, as long as we put them in brackets with an equal to sign at the end. And remember that if you got, for example, in this array from 1 to 10, we then need to put 10 default values. You can't leave any blank. You've got to put in however many uh, blocks there are in the, the array. You've got to make sure that you fill each and every one of them. So there we've set default values for an array. And so we set from 10, 45, 100. And so that will result in an array. When we start using it, it's already got the values in the array. So there you can see a position one, it's got a 10, a position two, it's got a 45, and position three, it's got a 100, just like it's got in the order of our default values. That's been our video on arrays and how do we get an introduction in, how to declare them and how to use them. I hope this has been useful. For other videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.